Welcome in to Bet On It. It is NFL Week 4, and we've got a myriad of events for you this week. We've got some primetime games, sandwich and traps, and just the tips, barking dogs. And while Andy Lang is on vacation, I'm still going to give you his best prop bet for this weekend. Ralph coming in hot off a wonderful weekend with some TNA and, of course, best bets. Let's get right into it. Thursday night primetime. We've got Joe Ranieri joining the show. Dallas minus four and a half at the New York Giants. Total 44 and a half. Yeah, that was uh, that was a great job, uh, Cowboys. Look really good against the run against Baltimore. Good Lord. Uh, listen, the Cowboys got punched in the mouth, not once, but now for the second straight week. And yes, we know when you give up 274 yards on the ground and everyone starts pointing a finger at each other on the sidelines, yeah, things are not going well in Jerry world. But... There's only one thing I can think of in the world for the Cowboys that will right all those wrongs, and that is playing the New York Giants on a prime time game. And why is that? Well, when it comes to the New York Giants, I don't know that any quarterback in the history of the game has had more success against the Giants than Dak Prescott. In fact, the Cowboys 12-2 and two with Dak Prescott as a starter against the Giants. That includes 10 consecutive wins. Also, when it comes to primetime games, the Giants, yeah, they burn money. 1-13 in in primetime games, especially with Daniel Jones as their starter. That's 0-4 on Thursday nights uh, and 0-3 against Dallas. Yes, we have a Dallas Cowboy team that certainly has some flaws, but maybe the best thing to happen is they're getting the hell out of Jerry World And they're heading to New Jersey to take on a team they're very familiar with. And they have a ton of confidence uh, having beaten them there. I have no doubt that the Cowboys get right this week here, Cal. The line opened up at four, four and a half. I'm seeing five and a halfs now in the marketplace. Yes. Can Dallas run the ball? They'll have a better chance of running it against this, uh, this Giants team than they have against a few of the other teams that they've already played. Also, they'll definitely be able to throw the ball against a lackluster secondary of the Giants, who, in fact, I believe might be without one of their best cover corners, Andrew Phillips here, which is also going to be a problem. I expect Dak to do what Dak has done and the Cowboys to do what the Cowboys have done, and that's beat the New York Giants and beat them easily. I have this closer to a touchdown with Dallas, so I'll lay the five, five and a half points here. I think Dallas gets right on Thursday night. Let's welcome in Teddy Covers for some Sunday night primetime. Buffalo off a Monday night thrashing. Now two and a half point underdogs at Baltimore. 46 and a half is a little higher than I'd like for a teaser situation, Teddy. But boy, does it look easy to tease those Buffalo Bills. Sure, but I mean, from a side standpoint, it's kind of sports betting one-on-one is the conventional thought process here. You talked about Buffalo off the huge emotional Monday night football win. They're off back-to-back monster blowouts, Miami and the Jags, placing a tougher opponent here. They're a short week. They're on the road. In theory, it's not supposed to be a bet on week for the Bills. And, of course, Baltimore started 0-2. They won last week, but they're not feeling great about it. They did their best to blow the 28-6 lead in the fourth quarter. You know, offense, defense, special teams all contributing to that collapse. They got the W, but one would say they're probably still hungry, sitting at 1-2 and two against their 3-0 and o foe. So handicapping 101, you're supposed to be taking team like the Ravens and laying a short favorite price with them or back them on the money line. But, as we like to say, not so fast, my friends. What if Buffalo is just an undervalued commodity? I mean, the Bills jettisoned veterans this past offseason, a bunch of them. And all I heard all offseason is Bills are going to be down. Bills are coming back to earth. Bills are primed for a down season. Bills are primed for problems. Buffalo looks awesome right now, despite defensive injuries they've had. And what if Baltimore just isn't that good? I understand they've got Lamar Jackson. They've got a bunch of weapons on offense, but they replaced three offensive line starters in the offseason. And this defense is clearly vulnerable. The Raiders picked them apart. The Cowboys picked them apart in the fourth quarter with relative ease. And Baltimore, too, had a defense coordinator change this offseason and major personnel losses, OL problems, et cetera. So I can't get there with Baltimore. I'm not convinced of the better of these two teams. I'm looking at the Buffalo side here, not the Baltimore side. And if I'm playing a total, well, 
in a league that is trending heavily to the under, these two teams, five and one to the over between them, no surprise here if we see points and points in bunches again on Sunday night. Ooh, points in bunches. Marco D'Angelo, welcome to the show. Monday night, we have another doubleheader. You're going to take the first one. Tennessee plus two and a half at Miami, total 36 and a half. What a dumpster fire for a Monday night football game. Why on earth did you pick this one? Somebody has to do it, Kelly. And being the gentleman that I am, I let you have the nicer game, the better game. And that's why we get these double headers. One's dog shit, one's good. That's the way it is. So I'll take the dog crap game. And we're looking at this one. You've got Tennessee coming in with the human turnover. Will Levis, how good has he been in Tennessee? They've got eight turnovers already. Then you got the Miami Dolphins. Wow. <laughs> no Tua. Now you might not have Skylar Thompson. That might actually be a good thing. But you've seen this line. We've seen some movement on it. Miami was a uh, two-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, we're seeing a ton of ones and some pick across town now as people are concerned about who's going to start for the Dolphins. Last week, uh, they brought in Tim Boyle to start, or not to start, to replace uh, Thompson when he got hurt. And they have another quarterback in camp. They didn't go to him, uh, Tyler Huntley, simply because he didn't arrive in Miami until Tuesday. Now with a full extra week to prepare. I have a feeling if it's not Skylar Thompson, we're going to probably see Tyler Huntley. But if you're Tennessee, you're going to have to prepare for three different quarterbacks because you don't know who's going to start. It's going to be a game time decision. I am going to go ahead and go with Miami. They got their backs against the wall. And because we are looking at probably a different quarterback this week with the rib injury, and even if he is able to go, how effective would Thompson be? I would look to see one of the other quarterbacks. I'm going to go with the injured player theory and find a way for Miami to get it done. Yeah, I know they didn't fill the void last week in that situation. And unfortunately, I was one of the ones that was on them. But they were playing a Seattle team that is 3-0. and They're playing a Tennessee team that's not. I'm going to go ahead. I'll take Miami to find a way to get this one done. It's not going to be a high-scoring game, 20-13. to 13. I'm counting on Will Levis to do what he does best and give me maybe a pick six with a stupid throw. Oh, boy, Marco, I feel that one. I might have already teased the Titans, and, and no, I, I – Really don't feel good about it. That being said, I'm going to take the last primetime game. Seattle, this one's had some line movement already. Four and a half at Detroit, 46 and a half. This one's going to be interesting because you kind of have to wonder about this Lions team, right? We saw them lose just a couple short weeks ago to the Bucks, And everybody kind of thought, eh, this Bucks team is better than advertised. Myself included. But now I'm looking at a Detroit team off a nice win going back home. But my real question is, who the hell has Seattle played? Let's see. They hosted Denver and a, and a guy named Bo Nix, who looked like the second coming of Tom Brady last weekend. They went to New England with Jacoby Brissett and really no playmakers on that Patriots team. And then last week, as Marco mentioned, they played Skylar Thompson in a Dolphins offense that looked absolutely abysmal. I understand Seattle has had Detroit's number. They've covered five straight against this team. And I do like this Seahawks defense, but I do not think they're going to be able to stifle Jared Goff and this offense at home. Slight nod here to Detroit. I may even end up considering using them in a couple survivor contests that I do not need to save for Thanksgiving. All right, we're going to keep on moving. And that means uh, it's time to figure out what VR's got up his sleeve. It's time for him to bring us some of that gold. Yanni the Greek, the bringer of gold. We're just going to put him in quotations in the middle. Your new middle name is Gold VR because that's what you're always bringing here on the NFL edition of Bet On It. As always, I'm just going to let you run. Here we go. All right, we got a lot to look at and make sure you pay attention because there are a lot of two-way sharp action. These lines are so tight in the NFL that we're seeing a lot of early movement and then a lot of buyback later. 
and even some disagreements between a lot of these betting syndicates, um, especially with the look aheads. So let's dive right in. Start off on Thursday Night Football. Perfect example. Cowboys, look ahead, minus seven down to minus four and a half. Now, you got to remember, at seven, it looked like it was getting dummied up on the Giants. And then you saw the Dallas steam. So it's a little bit confusing when you look at these opening line movements because you got to factor in there was the look ahead before that that they're booking action at. So there's a lot going on even a week prior to where most of the betters see the lines opening. Um, move down to the Falcons, minus one and a half, and the under. Look ahead was 46. It's all the way down to 42 and a half. It did get bet down to 41 and a half before you saw some over money, but when it got up to like 42 and a half, 43, more under money. So under is as legit as it comes. The key is, is there still some EV on that number? Move down to Texans, minus six and a half. That look ahead was minus four and a half. So this is a big move all the way up to six and a half. Keep your eyes open. Will it get to that key seven? Now, uh, Panthers plus five and a half. The look ahead was seven there and 42 and a half. Now you're seeing over money all the way up to 44 and a half and 45. Now, uh, the bet you got to be careful because it looked Dalton looking good got that money immediately. But the look ahead was seven. Now, when it drops, the key is are you going to see some resistance on the Bengals? Always look out for that resistance, kind of like we saw with the Bears and the Rams game, very next game, where the look ahead was minus four, got bet down to minus one within three days. Now it's up to that key three on the Bears. So there's some Rams money at plus four. There's some Bears money at minus one. Both of them appear to be plus EV with it sitting at that minus three price right now, pretty much across the board. Personally, I like the Bears. Broncos, another team that got money down to that key number, eight and seven and a half. Drop down to the Commanders, another team which is getting money, looking good on Monday Night Football. So there's a lot of recency bias there. It got dummied up, one other one, where the five and a half look ahead got dummied up to minus six, and then the steam came in. Uh, dropped down to Kansas City Chiefs. Saw some two-way action there. The look ahead was three, now up to seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. I even saw nine out there. That's where you saw did see some charger money. Remember, eventually... These e, the the line moves so significant that the EV flips to the other side. Remember the, the the goal is to take advantage of the number, not take advantage of predicting the outcome. Um, move down to Monday Night Football. Lions, Lions, Lions. Uh, steamed at minus three, three and a half. But you did see some take back on Seattle at that plus five. Another example of a lot of two-way action in the NFL. Quick totals under 41, all the way down to 39 on Browns Raiders. And uh, I also gave you already Bengals over and under in Saints Falcons. So a lot will pan out between now and the weekend. Uh, but as you can see, key numbers and two-way action when the line moves significantly. Absolutely. And that's why we do Sunday morning last call with VR, because we want to know which moves were real, which were fake, and get that last minute up to date information every single time from the Greek gambler. Thank you to him. Make sure you guys are giving him a follow on all of his social media channels at Greek underscore gambler. Next up, do we have a sandwich game of the week? Maybe there's a trap. Of course, Teddy's just the tip. Joe's, are you high? Maybe he's a little too high this week. And of course, barking dog from me. It's lunchtime here. I can feel my stomach growling and it, you know, Chef Marco, what do you got for me here? Please tell me we have a sandwich game of the week. Oh, Kelly, we do have a sandwich, but I don't know if you're going to like to eat this sandwich. I'm bringing you another ugly one, but boy, this one sets up perfect. We're going to take a look at the Rams at Chicago, and yes, we're going to have us a Chicago Bear sandwich. Look at the Rams and the spot they're in. You can't get a worse spot for the Rams. They're coming off a monumental upset last week. They were decimated with injuries. How are they going to do it? Yeah, I know the 49ers had injuries too, but the 49ers have a much deeper roster. And the 49ers were coming off a loss 
in an angry uh, mood uh, from that Minnesota game the week before. And the Rams were coming off getting blown out at Arizona. So how were the Rams ever going to pull that off? Well, they did. They got the win. Now let's look at the first three weeks of what the Rams schedule has been. They opened the season on the road at Detroit. Playoff revenge on Sunday night football. Then they played back-to-back road games. Went to Arizona. Horrible spot for them. They were in a sandwich that week. And what happened? Yeah, they got blown out. Come back home. Got the win against their arch rival, the 49ers. Now what do they got to do? They're back out on the road. Third week in four games on the road. And you're playing Chicago. How are you going to get excited about Chicago other than they have the number one draft pick in Caleb Williams? Next week, they have a much bigger game with Green Bay. This is a flat spot, and I am going to take advantage of it. Now, Caleb Williams, yeah, he hasn't done much so far. He did throw last week for 300 yards, took 52 attempts to do it, but he did. That's a step forward. Let's see if they can get the job done. I'm looking at this Rams defense, and it's not been that good. They've given up a lot of points uh, so far, a lot of yards. I think Chicago gets right here. Let's take the Bears as the sum, uh, as the sandwich for this week. Give me the Chicago Bears minus the two and a half. Oh, woof. Lots of uh, <laughs> trust there in the Marco sandwich tree. We're kicking him out of here because I got a little nauseated. We're going to bring back in Joe because I'm going to need something for that nausea, Joe. What do you got for me? Yeah, well, if you excuse me a minute here while I clean my throat. My goodness. Uh, we are uh, we are going to be, uh, well, not as high this week here, Cal. In fact, I feel like uh, I'm already way too high with this game in Atlanta with Derek Carr and the New Orleans Saints taking on the Falcons here. We saw this line uh, open up 44 and a half, somewhere in that, right? maybe even a little higher than that. It's been bet down to about 43, even 42 and a half are starting to pop up. And I get it. Uh, I get it because both of these teams, number one, have, uh, have very good defenses uh, this season. That is to be expected. We just saw what that high-flying offense of Derek Carr at home uh, well, it looks like Vic Fangio figured out a couple of different ways to be able to limit them and limit them. Uh, he did. We also have, as far as I'm concerned, a quarterback in Kurt Cousins that is still not 100 percent. He's still having issues planting and throwing off of that back Achilles there. And I don't think that's going to change any time soon. But what we also have is a quarterback in Kurt Cousins that has been one of the more profitable quarterbacks to the under here this number sitting at 43 both teams have injuries on the offensive line which is going to make the other defenses well put that much more pressure uh these teams are going to want to establish the run they're going to want to use the run a lot here uh much easier to run than to ask backup offensive linemen to pass block especially for kurt cousins here I've got this game, Cal, 20 to 17, somewhere in that ballpark, 21 uh, to to 14. Uh, I don't think we get over 43 points in here. I think this number is a little bit too high. The market jumped all over it to push it down under. I agree with that move. So, yeah, uh, I think Atlanta and the Saints, just a little too high for my taste this week. Just a little too high. And just like that, I feel just a little bit better. Teddy, you know a little something about smoking, just maybe, uh, we're just a tiny bit. I know uh, Joe can be a little high. This one is a sell high. Teddy's just mm. the tip. Talk to me about my survivor pick this week. Sure, let's do a little stock watch. Just the tip, and I want to talk about the San Francisco 49ers right now. This is a team that came into the season with basically everybody back from a team that went to the Super Bowl last year a team that had been in three straight NFC Championship games for the last five, two Super Bowls during that span, truly an elite franchise for the last half decade. Their contract situations got resolved. Brandon Ayuk came for week one, and now San Fran was power rated right there with Kansas City as the two best teams in the league. Now, we know that it's hard to be intense in the regular season. After all of that postseason action, there's a reason that Super Bowl losers tend to do poorly against the spread. And in general, A team like 
San Francisco that's been at this high level for a long time. There's only one way to go, and that's down. And then we start to look at the 49ers' current situation, all right? Well, let's not forget the Trey Lance pick, the, tra- the trade to tr- for Trey Lance, the trade for Christian McCaffrey, that decimated them depth-wise in terms of the draft. So they've got a lot of superstar talent and a lot of guys on veteran minimum contracts. So what's happened? Look at the injury list. It's a mile long right now. I mean, big names, Debo, Kittle, McCaffrey, Trent Williams, out for the year guys like Jason Hargrave, Drake Greenlaw, Drake Jackson. This is a problem for a team that doesn't have the depth that they've had in recent years. Right now, San Fran ranks number 30 in the NFL in yards per play allowed. And it's not just that Justin Jefferson 97-yard touchdown. That play was a symptom of the problem. Purdy's got a QB rating of 109.2. He's averaging 8.9 yards per pass attempt. And they're one and two with the number two passing offense in the NFL. Oh, by the way, Purdy's got a bad back right now. Oops. <laughs> this is the easy part of their schedule. They're still laying points every week. I'll tell you flat out, I'm going to sell high on San Fran. We're looking for spots to bet against the 49ers over the course of the next month. All right, Teddy, current line on the wager talk odd screen is 10. There's some 10 and a half still left. Am I crazy to be using the Niners this week for Survivor? Because based on what you're telling me is probably now would be the time to use them because later on as the schedule gets tougher and the injuries continue to pile up, you may want to start really selling the 49ers. Sure, the markets could get there. San Fran is not a team I'm excited about using in Survivor this week. That being said, you got to pick somebody. They are the biggest favorite on the board, although taking the v- biggest favorite on the board the first three weeks of the season has resulted in 95% of the field being out already, <laughs> for what it's worth. Ah, uh, for what it's worth, as if I wasn't overthinking this enough. Here's one that I'm not overthinking, though. I'm going to tell you guys straight up. Last week, it worked out well for us. We took the decimated team, the one with all the injury woes, and we said they're barking. And not only were they barking, they won outright last minute field goal. So I'll pat myself on the back for this one. I actually don't think the Chargers are going to win by a last minute field goal, but I think this is too many points for a Chiefs team who just seems to get away by the skin of their teeth every single week. Yes, I know they are 3-0 and on this season. And yes, they still have an explosive offense, but do they? Two tight end formations, and we haven't even seen Travis Kelsey do a thing this season. Harbaugh. What can he do defensively? This one was eight, well, seven, up to eight on the wager talk odds screen. Now back down to seven and a half. I do think we see Harbaugh rally the troops here for an AFC West divisional, albeit home game. I like the Chargers here over a touchdown. They tend to cover against Kansas City, who, while might win the game outright because they have won 10 straight against this team, too many points here. They are a barking dog. Don't be surprised if they cannot upset the Kansas City Chiefs. The prop prince is, uh, well, he's in Portugal, you guys. I don't know why somebody let him go on vacation during football season. I don't get that luxury. Okay, maybe sometimes I do. That being said, we're going to give out his play for this week because he's our favorite guy and we don't want him to miss it. Also, did you guys come up with a new nickname yet? Because I need that (laughs) while he's gone. Uh, Kyler Murray. Over one and a half passing touchdowns. Andy texts me, fading the Washington secondary, who've given up more than one and a half TD passes in every single game this year. Seems simple enough to me, guys. We're moving right along. You guys know what these glasses mean. One thing, it's time for some TNA with Ralph Michaels. Ralph Michaels, new TNA segment, same awesome glasses. Ralph, what a nice 6-0 and last week on Wager Talking College Football, went 2-0 and on this show. Ralph, because we changed it up last week, we got some commenters that were very mad about the charts, but he is still going to tweet them out, at Cal Sports LV. But he's bringing us all of the actionable info. Ralph, NFL, it's been kind of kicking my ass. Give me some help. Kelly, thank you very much. Our NFL TNA play of the day. We're going to New York, and we're going to back the New York Jets minus the seven and a half against Denver. When you look at Denver and you say, wow, this defense is pretty damn good. They're allowing 126 yards per game and only 259 yards per game. 
Well, they played Seattle. They hosted Pittsburgh. They went to Tampa. And, you know, they did hold Tampa to 223 yards. But it is very, very difficult to upset back-to-back teams in the NFL. Kelly, when I went to the database, teams often upset win as a dog of six or more. And now are a dog of six or more again in their next game. They are 24 and 59. That is 29% against the spread. When a team is an away dog of plus five and higher, off a win as a dog of 17 or more, since 2010, those teams are 31% against the spread. And when you throw out the last few games of the season, games 15 and higher, those teams, as an away dog of five or more, off a win as a dog of 17 or more, are 28% against the spread. And again, that is since 2010. An amazing long run. I look at the Jets. Aaron Rodgers, a 6.7 YPA, you think that's pretty bad? It is. We've seen he's going to need some adjustment time to throw the ball downfield. He's been using Bryce Hall, Brees Hall a lot at, in short passes. And while that is a very low number in the NFL, I want to point out Bo Nix is completing under 60% completions with a 5.0 yards per attempt. I've never seen an NFL quarterback after three games that's taken every snap to have a YPA that low. And most importantly, this Jets defense held New England to 139 yards and seven sacks. The Jets defense has 14 sacks this year against Bo Nix, who was sacked twice against Seattle and twice against Pittsburgh. But the Jets D that gave up 11 first downs last week, Kel, was only on the field for 41 plays. That is like half a game when you're playing a fast opponent. And when I looked at the database, teams that only played 48 plays or less on defense that won the game and the game went under, they have covered 70% against the spread. So in improving Aaron Rodgers, that's feeling comfortable, a Jets D that is completely rested after playing 41 plays and fading the Broncos off a huge upset win. We don't mind laying the seven and a half with the New York Jets as our NFL TNA play of the week. I have a feeling the Jets are going to be a very popular teaser play as well as a popular survivor play. Thank you to Ralph at Cal Sports LV. He is the best. Speaking of best, it's time for those best bets. Marco D'Angelo, you get to go first and mainly because I don't have the promo in front of me and you're so much better at reading it than I am. Yes, Kelly, we got a big offer at Wager Talk this week, and it's site wide. Any capper, you can pick up a 90 day all access package and think about it right now. This is the best time of the year. You've got football, obviously, college and pro. You've got baseball heading to the playoffs. You've got hockey and basketball just around the corner. Get everything for 90 days for $849, but we'll make it even better. We'll throw in a bonus 30-day all-access, giving you a total of 120 days. That's a $299 free bonus. And this includes all plays, including those 5% plays. Remember, every 5% play at Wager Talk sells for $35. And speaking of those 5% plays, I want to thank everybody that jumped on board last week for ours in the NFL. We're now 10 and 2 since February on those 5% plays. Good time to jump on board for that special at Wager Talk. Now for my best bet, we're going to head to the Steel City. Going to get involved in my hometown team. And Coach Mike Tomlin has a saying he likes to say all the time in press conferences, the standard is the standard. You know what? I have a saying of my own. Counterfeit is counterfeit, and your 3-0 and record is counterfeit, Mike. I'm sorry. You haven't beaten anybody. All right? Look at who the Steelers have played. And everybody is talking all about the Steeler defense. And, yeah, the Steeler defense has been great. Why has it been great? Well, week one. 
They played Kirk Cousins, his first start after horrific injury and for a new team. Yeah, how about that? How'd that work out? Not good. Then in week two, they faced Denver with the rookie quarterback, Bo Nix. You know how well Tom Tomlin does against rookie quarterbacks. And then last week, finally, an NFL player I could outrun, Justin Herbert on one leg. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. Great job, Steelers. Now you're a favorite on the road. Granted, just a one and a half point favorite, but you're three and oh, and it's pick the winner. I'm not buying it. I am all over Indianapolis in this one. And the one thing here, not a super fan of Anthony Richardson, but what I am a fan of is he can run the football. And the Steelers have not faced a mobile quarterback yet this season. I'm going to take Indianapolis to get the job done here. And you're asking the Steelers to lay points on the road. They've scored 18, 13, and 20 points on the season. And, yeah, Justin Fields, he's 3-0. and It's easy to play quarterback position when you're ahead in all of those games. He's not had to play from behind yet. And, Kelly, this is my best bet, so I'm going to have Indianapolis, obviously. But you know what? you got a low total. you got a home dog. You got a number here. You know I'm going to have some teasers in my pocket as well. Give me the Indianapolis Colts every which way I can. I don't blame you. I, too, have Colts and teasers. There's a lot of really (laughs) great teaser spots this week, including Joe's best bet. Joe, have you finally warmed up to the team that you grew up cheering for your entire life? Can we have this conversation next week's show? Uh, And I'll let you know how warm I'm going to be after I am absolutely backing the New York Jets in more ways than one here, Cal. Yes, uh, teaser spot, great for the Jets. You know what this is not a really good spot for? Uh, The Denver Broncos team now. They're playing their second straight road game after a double-digit win off a playoff team from a year ago, no less. And meanwhile, you have the Jets playing a second straight home game and have extended rest after trouncing uh, the New England Patriots last Thursday night here. Uh, This is just awful for the rookie quarterback here, uh, Bo Nix, who looked great, by the way, and more comfortable in the offense in that game against Tampa He also did it against a secondary of Tampa as well as a defensive line of Tampa that was missing uh, half their starters. So kudos, uh, congratulations. I still think we're waiting for that first touchdown pass. Uh, And here's the other problem. Bo Nix is your leading rusher on the Denver uh, Broncos here. That's not great considering he's going up against a much healthier and much better defense this week that already has 14 sacks in three games. Uh, This is going to be a rough spot for him. Aaron Rodgers looking more and more, even saying now, uh, as I take a page out of uh, our good friend Teddy Cover's book here, uh, quotes coming out of the uh, New York Jets locker room, Aaron Rodgers feeling like he did a few years ago, where you may remember his old self, MVP, old self here. Yes, when you are Aaron Rodgers and you're worried about, well, Garrett Wilson to be shut down by Patrick Sertan, Yeah. Uh, Does Aaron Rodgers look like he's got a problem finding every other receiver on the team who can catch a ball? The answer is no. Brutal spot for Denver. Great spot for the Jets, who the eye test tells me is getting better and better each week. A lot of that has to do with Aaron Rodgers. I love the offensive line that's coming together for him this week. I think this has got double digit victory all day long for the New York Jets. So, yes. I will back them. I'll put them in teasers, Cal. And if they don't win this game, uh, then you and I, I'll have a totally different answer to your original question about am I warming up to them. But let's just say the Jets all day long against Denver this week. Yeah, that is a great teaser spot. I just locked in a couple of more Mm -hmm. teasers. And while there usually isn't a lot of teasers, I love lots of low totals this week. So you guys keep an eye on that. My best bet is going to be the same as it was week one except this time I'm laying three and a half with the Cardinals instead of the Bucks, And that's because I'm playing against the Washington Commanders. I know 
Jaden Daniels, boy, did he look really good on Monday night against the Bengals. And I don't want to take away anything that he's accomplished. And I know there's a lot of memes flying around comparing him to Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady and Brett Favre and all of these wonderful quarterbacks we've had over the years that have had very successful careers. But everybody pumped the brakes. The guy has played three games, okay? His defense is the real issue here. And uh, as Andy mentioned in his text to me about why he liked Kyler Murray over one and a half touchdowns. It's the same reason why I like the Cardinals here. I expect the Cardinals, Kyler Murray, and that top-ranked defense to cause him to make some mistakes and to be able to exploit that commander's secondary. Three and a half is not three, and I wish it was, but unfortunately, we got to go with the current odds on the Wager Talk odd screen. So I'm going to lay the three and a half with the Cardinals. As I mentioned, I expect a similar result to we saw week one. Jaden Daniels and the Commanders get brought back down to earth. Teddy covers. The time has come for you to give me your best bet. Well, the time has come for me to give you guys a freaking winner. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> let's put it this way. My picks on this show so far are the moral equivalent of how Wong teasers have done so far this football season, <laughs> which is not good. Um, clients aren't real happy. I'm not real happy. And one thing we are, we're transparent and we're forthright. When I'm winning, I'll tell you about it. If I'm not winning, I'm going to bitch about it. And that's where we are right now. Let's see if we can get things going in the right direction this week and talk about this Arizona Cardinals team and the Washington Commanders team. Some uh, game that's gotten a fair bit of play on this show. Kelly likes Arizona. Andy Lang likes the Kyler Murray over. Touchdowns. I like the full game over. We're talking 50 slash 50 and a half, the prevailing number right now. What are we talking about? Two potent offenses. Both these teams, yards per play on offense, top quartile of the NFL through the first three weeks of the season. These are offenses that can put up points and they can score touchdowns in the red zone. And we have extend the play quarterbacks on both sides. That's going to be a problem for these two defenses. We do not trust Arizona's defense. We do not trust Washington's defense. Washington defense ranks number 31 in yards per play, number 26 in the red zone. Arizona red zone's defense has been every bit as much of a disaster, 24th in the league in that regard. So we expect touchdowns. We expect yards. We trust these offenses. And of course, what have we seen the last two weeks? Under week, under week, back to back. What did we go? 10, 5, and 1 of the under this past week, and it was similar the previous week. Yet these two teams are both 2 and 1 to the over. They've been catching overs. I think they'll catch another one here. The highest total on the board is the highest total for a reason. Look for the Commanders and Cardinals to get up and over the total on Sunday. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with us here on the NFL edition of Bet On It. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's show as much as we always do filming it. For myself, Marco, Ralph, VR, Andy on vacation, Teddy, and Joe, good luck. Until next week, let's bet on it.